Hello everyone, this is Women's Grandmaster Sabina Foyshor. Welcome back to St. Louis Chess Club's YouTube channel. For today, I have prepared for you some very interesting uh, studies. And uh, I've mixed the themes. In previous weeks, I've shown um, Zugzwang, Stalemate, Promotion, Under Promotion. And now I've decided for um, today's... Uh, a video and stream to show you multiple um, themes and um, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Without further ado, let us get started. All right, so the first the first position that I have set up here for you is actually a study. I'm not exactly sure who has composed this study, but um, <laughs> insane in the end game in the, indeed. Um, that that's technically the the name of the of today's class. But um, I like to. I mean I decided to, to focus on studies, which are also typically endgame studies. My dad has shared uh, the study with me today, and he wanted to make sure I'm going to say that it was from him, and I did. Um, for the first time in this month, I decided to go visit him. He doesn't live that far away, but um, Basically, you know, I was I was very busy with teaching and I haven't had the chance. But today, as we met, it's always like this in my family. It's always been like this. We had like a really fun talk about chess. We're always talking about chess. These days, there's something else. Uh, we're talking cryptocurrency as well. But that's for another time, for another stream. Right now, let's focus on chess. And this is a study that he gave me and... Since I didn't have a board close by, I was like, just tell me the position. I'm going to try to solve it blindfolded. He's like, no, 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 but it's not so easy. There are lots of pawns. You don't know what to do. I was like, it doesn't matter. Just give me the position. I'm going to try to solve it. And um, um, surprisingly, I actually managed to do it, uh, considering that I'm not, I haven't been working on chess on my on my own very much. So. I decided to share it with you as the first kind of like get in shape study. So what do you guys think about this position? Um, unfortunately, I do not know the author of this position, but um, it is clear that White is trying to win and it's going to be a Zugzwang idea, which is a theme that I've discussed previously in my streams, it's a theme that I enjoy very much. Zugzwang and Stalemate are two of my favorite themes, I think, in studies. And um, and yeah, so what do you guys think? If you're going to watch this later, be sure to pause the video. <laughs> if you are watching right now, uh, well, I can let you think about it <laughs> a little bit more. But I will have to show the solution. So um, basically the idea is that black is stuck here with the bishop. So he's not going to be able to, to move it away. And he's basically going to make these two moves. He will go back king, uh, king a2, king b1 if you are able to create the right restriction so that you know the king cannot move anywhere. So someone is saying bishop d5. Um, it's actually not bishop d5. The point is, if you play bishop d5 in this position, then uh, black can promote to something. You're going to capture that pawn, and then he's going to escape with the king, because now you don't really have a way to keep him there. He's threatening to promote in this position. And now if you're checking him, for example, he can just run away. And the best thing you can do is maybe just give a couple of checks, then go bishop e4, stop the pawn from promoting. They can promote to whatever they want you take, and this is not going to be winning. Even if you win those two pawns, two bishops versus one bishop should be a draw. So it is very important to keep that in mind and try to avoid um, 
to avoid letting them <laughs> letting them escape with the king it is very important to be careful about that yes all right so the idea here is to make sure that when the king goes to a2 he's not going to be able to escape so the key um thing to do is to restrict the a3 square and this is the reason why i love studies because it makes you think it makes you come up with an idea yes it is true sometimes there are lines that are forced but that also helps you become more familiar with the calculation so in this position we're going to play bishop d6 that is the correct first move for white restricting that square now what is black going to do he can try we can try pretty much anything but uh, i think b5 kind of makes sense he can try king a2 as well but if that happens um, we're going to check them, right? He goes king b1. I hope I I hope I put the the, the position correctly. <laughs> I hope I have put it correctly the way he has shown it to me. And what do we do now? Can we capture this pawn? And if he plays b5? I'm not hearing any moves from you guys, which is sad. It is sad. What do you do in this position with white? Bishop takes h2. Well, we'll get back to that. Bishop takes h2. He's pushing b4 now, right? Now you have to be careful because if he gets to play b3, If he gets to play b3 and you're not careful, he will escape with the king, so you have to be very careful. All right, we can play bishop bishop f4, for example. He's going to play b3, and now he has this move, right? So we are, we're going to take advantage of it, and we're going to go king c3. He needs to go over there. We are going to capture this pawn. He cannot go king a3 because of the mate. Well, we'll get back. We'll get back to it. He has to go king to b1. Bishop b4. Okay, we'll, we'll get back to that. Now we can just move the bishop somewhere. He will play king c1. And how is the winning idea? How do we get to win? Bishop a3, he goes king b1. Now what? I think you guys are behind, or I am behind. The, this room is behind, something is behind. Bishop c2, king c1, and then, you know, if you're not careful, he's going to, to have the promotion idea. You can try to do a triangulation or something. Uh, king c1, king e2 if you want to, he's going to go king b1, but then what do you do? Bishop somewhere far away. He will come back in c1. Bishop g5 check. He will go king b1. And then what is your winning idea? Because the best way you can win is if you somehow manage to kind of restrict him somehow. But, uh, but I don't know. You guys want to go back to the, to the position? I can go back to the position. So bishop g6 right what did we say i said b5 but if he plays king a2 right bishop d5 check king b1 how do we win You guys are saying bishop before here. Mm -hmm. I see. 
and I'm going to play b5. King takes d2, h1 queen, bishop takes h1, king a2, bishop d5 check, king b1, and now bishop a3, right? That's the idea. All right, someone I think, someone I think found it. b4, and now we're waiting for it to take the bishop. We go bishop b3, and when they take, we can play king to d1, and whenever they push a2, we've got a checkmate. This is basically the idea. You had to be very careful. I wanted to see what you guys are saying, but bishop d6 <laughs> is the correct move in this position. And if they play b5, we're basically doing the same thing. It's very important to blockade this pawn first so that it doesn't get to push further because you want to have the opportunity for it to take your bishop. Um, and you need to make sure you're blockading b3 too. So you saw in the other line, maybe you're winning, but if you let him play b3, it's, it makes it more complicated. So when black plays there, we're checking him, right? And since we cannot move the bishop here just yet because there's promotion, we need to do this. But as they promote the pawn, and that's why it was very important for the pawn to be there, the king has to go to a2. Now he's on stalemate position so we have to let them a free square and now this is a very important move so the pawn cannot come there so that we don't take it and then as i said waiting move and mate so i really hope you guys like this idea i, I thought it was really fun because you have to be a little bit careful with what black is doing but in the same time you know you've got this stalemating idea and um and the zugzwang idea all right Let's go on to the next position, and this is a position that I had actually from previous time, but I didn't get the chance to uh, go over until the end. So in this position, it is white to move, of course, um, and and um, black is trying to create a fortress. We have it, it, it's a position that could certainly happen in the game created by Jan Timan, and uh, it could certainly happen in a game. The point is that uh, black is trying to create a fortress. If somehow they manage to create a fortress, then they should be able to, um, to make a draw. But white is stopping black from creating a fortress. So what ideas do you guys have in this position? Because we have this past f pawn that we're trying to promote and black is going to try to restrict it the knight wants to come in and um there's uh there's there are ideas with bishop a3 bishop a6 to stop the pawn from promoting so it is really it is really a matter of uh, being super precise with white in order to stop black and again it's a, it's a position that could certainly happen in a game the first move that you should think about in this position is f6 the point is this of this move is of course to go promote the pawn and black's only chance to save himself here is to play knight c6 check and here it is very important where you're moving the king because as i said fortress is something that black is trying to create so you can go king c7 and king c8 one of the moves is correct, the other one is a mistake. King c7 is actually the mistake. The point is that now black plays knight d4. If the knight gets to e6, he's going to be able to stop the f pawn from promoting. If you push f7, now there's a check. You will bring the king to attack the knight, of course, and now knight f8. You are attacking the knight once again, but after knight h7, no knight g6, but knight h7 black manages to make a draw because it is impossible for white to get rid of this knight because of the placement of the bishop you also cannot bring in your knight the way you probably would want to to bring it to f6 if you're trying these checks and bringing in the knight like this somehow then uh, black can simply play bishop here restrict your knight this we're having some kind of a domination idea theme 
the bishop restricting the knight and unfortunately for white there's no way to to um, create a progress in this position because regardless of where the knight goes the bishop will be able to go either on d5 or on h5 sacrifice for the pawn and black will be able to uh, basically save the game because um, you know you won't lose the knight after you sacrifice the bishop if needed you sacrifice it for the pawn and then uh, you know the knight comes back home and bishop and knight versus knight should be a draw same as bishop and knight versus bishop all right um, so for example here if you're not going to play f7 and you're considering to give this interesting check um, so that you deflect black's knight away from the f pawn and now you're thinking oh i'm just gonna play f7 and well i'm winning because i'm promoting and there's no way for black to stop the pawn Yes, you may think this way, but basically after knight takes g6 um, promotion, it is somewhat crazy, I know, but you guys hopefully have seen this kind of ideas before when two, it's usually two knights are able to somehow create a fortress and the queen cannot win the game. Well, in this case, we'll have a knight and the bishop, and if black places the knight in e4, if you're looking at this position, there will be no way for white's king to approach black's king. You see, all of these squares around the king are controlled. The knight is protected and the king just move, can move back and forth and there will be no way for white to progress the position or approach with the king to try to win. This is a really cool, super cool idea of fortress. So fortresses are very, very, very important in endgames and other kinds of games, uh, other kinds of positions too, middle games too. But specifically end games when you have material disadvantage, you can often find a way to create some restriction against your opponent so that you don't let them to progress the position and try to beat you. So that is something very, very important. There's no progress here. Keep that in mind. That's why King C7 is unfortunately a mistake because you're staying on those kind of patterns that allow this to be uh, to be happening. So after knight c6 check. The correct move for white is actually king c8. And this is what I love uh, about this position because, you know, now what do you do? How do you do the things? Can you do them as you did before, playing knight d4? You can try, but it's not going to work. We're going to see in a second. But I also want to um, show you that instead of this, bishop h3 check is an option too for black. But now we go king c7. And what's the difference? Well, now when you play f7 check, King to d6. Now uh, the knight has to go to f8 as we did before, right? King d7. And now um, if you go knight to h7, there's knight e4. And now white is threatening one of these two moves and there's no way for you to stop them. And that's because black had to move or moved it well to check the bishop from here. So now the bishop cannot be capturing the knight. After knight g6 check, um king f6 is going to be played and if you go knight f8 once again this knight can be brought here and then white shall be able to to get rid of this knight from f8 and eventually win the game we're threatening bishop d6 and then try to trade the knight and and, uh, and white is going to be winning so that's the reason why knight d4 is the move that uh, black could try to play here and we can try to see if we can get the same line but unfortunately we do not get the same line because after this check knight takes oh by the way we have to give this check f7 will not work because of knight e6 once again right and this is the same exact same idea when the knight made, uh, makes it here and because of the placement of uh, black's bishop white does not have a way for the knight to come and trade this knight in h7 so knight e2 this is where you're deflecting the knight and now it is also very very important to come up with a good idea because if you push then there's going to be knight takes g3 and we've already seen this idea so it doesn't make sense to see it again there's no way for white's king to progress we can just sit with the king back and forth and it's going to be a draw but here, uh, bishop f2 check. That is the correct move for white. Bishop f2 check. 
and king takes f2 and now f7 because basically you want to promote with check and restrict them from getting that fortress. If knight g3 we promote to a queen, king g1 and now you have to be careful not to allow black's knight to get to e4 but you have a few checks that actually help you here. Check, for example king h1, now check and queen to f4. So if you manage to pin the knight in this fashion then clearly you're going to have uh, a winning idea because now after king a6 uh, you bring in your king and this is not the same kind of restriction as it was before because now black's king is not super protected so now if if white's king manages to make it to h5 then there will be a mate in h4 so it is very important every single piece the way it is placed um, it should be important in the uh, figuring out if the position is going to be a draw or not so this is a really cool idea bishop f2 check and f7 once again there's no way for black to create that fortress uh, I think there was one more line I wanted to show after king um, king g1 and then queen c5 check. If, for example, black says, you know what, I'm going to play knight f1 or bishop f1, that's fine. Because you're still bringing in your king and he's going to be bound to stay there and he's going to be super passive and that's the reason why we will be able to win with white because the king can approach, he's very passive and uh, and white will be winning. I hope you like this position, it's, it's a little bit cool to remind ourselves about fortresses. Here I have another position. What do you guys think about this position? White to move. So, Technically, considering that um, white is, um, you know, two pawns close to promotion, specifically this B1, um, you're thinking, okay, well, he can try to promote, but guess what? I have, I have brought white king in the corner with my knight and bishop. I should be able to have a mating idea. I should be able to come up with something. And yeah, you should be able to come up with something, but... But let's not forget, there's a B pawn that can be promoted, so it is very important. The theme of this one is double deflection. Um, B7, B7 indeed. B7 is the move to consider in this position with white. If you are playing knight somewhere, like for example knight D7, it's not going to work because you're even going to be losing because he can play king C2. And, you know, the, the point of this move is to try to control the promotion square and to take the knight away from the attack. But since b7 works because he cannot take the knight due to the promotion, then uh, this move doesn't make that much sense, basically. But let's just see it anyway. So b7. And now black manages to mate you. Check. King a2. And hopefully you guys see the mate here because white does not have a way to promote with tempo and that's why the correct move is bishop e2 and we're threatening knight c3 mate and there is no way no single way that uh, white is going to be able to save this position it's game over it's really important to keep in mind that if you have your king close to the center or in the center and their positions with knights and bishops that is the square the same color corner as the bishop that's where you know the knight and bishop want to bring the other side's king so knight d7 unfortunately this move unfortunately does not work but not to be worried okay because we can come up with a really good idea instead and we can push b7 after b7 we're threatening promotion and there are few moves that black can make uh, bishop d6 seems the most natural one if he's trying to create that mating pattern right now it's not going to work and keep very well in mind that there's a promotion with check happening so you cannot do that now if you're trying to go for example king c2 followed by bishop b2 uh, white will castle and then bishop b2 and you're saying oh it's made the next move whatever awesome no there's this check and once you move the king 
White has many ways to win, but probably could even take the knight. This is the easiest one. And then march the f pawn and win with the f pawn. So you really need to be careful on how you're going to do things. And that's the reason why in this position where white is pushing the pawn to promote, black has to play bishop d6. Stopping the pawn from promotion. But by doing so, is also taking the bishop away from a potential mating idea. So he has to be very careful. Well, white would be more careful. Knight d7, threatening to promote and win his bishop, after which we'll have the f pawn with which we can win too. Or maybe you start marching the f pawn, and then with the bishop alone, he will not be able to stop two pawns on opposite diagonals, right? If you have, for example, opposite color bishops, you probably have seen many times positions where the bishop stays on one diagonal and it stops both past pawns of the opponent. Well, in this case, it's not like that. The pawns are on separate diagonals, and that's the reason why the bishop cannot stop, and and um, and, and black would be losing in this position. All right? So, knight e3, attacking this pawn, f6. Um, and now, um, knight c2 check. And here we have multiple options. And once again, it is time to think and come up with the correct square. What do you guys think? Where is the correct square for white king? Gotta push. We cannot push, it's check. We need to we need to move our king. Um, so we can go king b2, king b2, or king b1. Uh, I'll start with the bad ones and we'll see. For example, if we go king b2, this would not be such a good idea because in this position, black can play knight to d4. So the knight is, is, uh, is joining the stopping of those pass pawns. The stopping of the pawns. You go here. And then he goes here. He's stopping of the pass pawns. And um, although your king is able to free to move, it's not going to work because there's check pawn. And um, you don't really have many moves to actually help yourself. Uh, for example, if you just sit with the king up here or something, then he's going to try to keep you restricted. And if you're not careful, maybe he will even have a mating idea. So you have to keep that in mind, okay? <laughs> Be very, very cautious about this. If king a2 is pretty much the same thing, check, king b3, and then knight c6, stopping that pawn from promoting with the, with the bishop or stopping the other one, but also keeping restricted white's king, and he's not going to be able to win here in any way. All right. But the correct move was king to b1. Why not b8 queen, someone was asking. I'm not sure in which line. But um, you couldn't, instead of king b3, I mean, king b3 was with tempo, and here b8 queen, we're just capturing with the knight, and then when they take back, we can take it. And we have sufficient time to come back and stop that c pawn. f pawn, sorry, f pawn. If, um, yeah, that's the reason why you're not promoting. You don't have sufficient time to trick them. And the position is going to be a draw. So white is playing king to b1 in this position. This is the correct move here. Knight d4. And now f7. What's the difference between these two? Because you can still play knight c6 or knight e6. So we'll try to see knight c6. What do you guys think? would be the correct answer for white in order to be able to win this position. The correct move and very gorgeous. I think it's super gorgeous now because you see both pieces restricting the pawns from promoting. You think nothing is going to happen. It should be a draw, but no, it's not going to be a draw because knight to e5 is an amazingly beautiful move. You're trying to deflect either one of these pieces so that you can promote. Well, mostly the bishop. You would love to deflect it, 
so that you can promote. But he will not leave. He will go knight b8. In case he captures here, once again, you can promote with whoever you want. And then you're going to promote the second pawn and white is winning. So, after knight e5, black plays knight e, uh, b8. And he's thinking with that knight, he's going to stop the b pawn. With the bishop, he's going to stop the f pawn. Everything should be perfectly fine. Pff, amazing. But no, not amazing because, oopsie, someone forgot about a check bishop. The king has to move and white takes the bishop after which the position is pretty, uh, pretty winning for white. There is no way to stop both pawns. 97 doesn't work. We can promote whichever one of the pawns we want. And after that, we're promoting the other one and we are winning. So very, very important. Knight c6. Mm -mm. All right, let's try knight e6, but it will be something very similar. So in this position, basically, both players uh, have something very clear in mind. Black is trying to stop white from promoting. White is trying to promote, deflect one of the pieces, and then be able to win with the other pawn. Uh, and... Uh, that's you guys remember the other idea when we were sacrificing the knight when the knight was in c4 well now we're doing the same thing knight to c5 forcing more or less the deflection if you take with the bishop we promote and you don't have any kind of sorry any kind of fortress or anything like that um and um after knight of eight there is 94 check. It's really gorgeous the fact that the bishop, even if it restricts those two pawns, it does stay on a check bishop over here, and white can perfectly utilize this idea in order to win the game. King somewhere, we take the bishop, and then there's no way for black to stop the promotion of the b pawn, and black is winning. So here was the second one. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one too. It's kind of nice, I think, with the deflection. With the two pawns trying to promote and the opponent stopping it. I hope you guys liked it. Now I have another one. As I said, I try to kind of combine the different themes so that you guys have the opportunity to see more themes. If you have missed some of the other videos uh, that I've made with studies, uh, I believe they're still on the Sellers Chess Club's YouTube page. If you are subscribed to the channel, uh, you should uh, be notified when the club is putting videos online. I highly recommend it because the club's YouTube channel is probably one of the best. There's always so much very interesting and very good material created by many top level players. And I think it is very important to be subscribed to this channel if you love chess and you're trying to improve. So. Be sure to do that. It's that easy. You just make a click and that's it. And then you're waiting for the notification to pop and for the live sessions, like live videos, live lectures uh, that are happening throughout the week. So what do we think about this position? This was created by Kalashnikov. White to move. What to do? Clearly in this position, black has this knight attacked and um, white has the bishop attacked. But if if somehow something happens and and uh, white gets to take the bishop and then black takes the knight, probably there will not be an easy way for them to actually um, win the game. I mean for white. But anyways... There is a beautiful idea, and that is d7. Um, someone else has said d7 in the chat, so well done. Good job for that. Uh, e6 is a nice choice, too, but unfortunately it does not work because black does have quite some checks. If you're not careful where you're going, you may end up even losing this, so you have to be very, very cautious. Say you push the pawn to try to promote, then we'll check you, and then wherever you go, we're going to check you again, and we're going to um, take this pawn. So he's going to go somewhere. We're going to take this pawn, and then whenever they promote, we get to do what? Get to have a couple of 
fun facts and that is we're checking them first then we're taking and once again in this position as in the previous one there should be a way for black to create a fortress and hold on to the position all right and there will be no progress whatsoever for white so e6 would have been very interesting um knight Knight c7 is another move that we want to consider, and uh, only after that we want to push d7. But the problem is after this move, you go bishop g8, e6, and now if they take um, d7, this is a gorgeous idea, but. Um, And now, um, there will be no way for white to really progress this position. This should be a draw. It's kind of crazy. E6 in that position is also leading to some drawing ideas because after the check, black manages to take the pawn. And if you do push d7, and that's the pawn that you should push because that's the pawn that gives you the opportunity of promotion rook f5 right and same thing happens after knight takes g7 king takes g7 we take and then uh, black should not rush to grab the pawn black should try to make sure they're stopping these two pawns because now they're dangerous they're really advanced the king can support them and with the rook alone you cannot really stop them so it's very important to play precise in this position rook d8 Keeping the d6 pawn protect, uh, attacked so that you cannot push the e pawn. If the king comes in, you can start with a few checks and you can see afterwards what you will do. But the checks are usually helpful because they push the king away and then black should be able to win the draw. But guess what? d7, many of you have suggested this move and you were right. If you did suggest this move, you're definitely right. Even if you didn't suggest it, but you thought about it and you were waiting for me to show you the correct solution, well, this is it, d7, attacking the rook. The rook needs to move somewhere, and the point is that now we play e6. So we're keeping the rook restricted there. We did not rush to move the knight. We are not threatening supposedly e7 yet, because if we do push it, they will grab the pawn, and then the e7 pawn will be hanging very, very soon. So in this position, we're also threatening to take the bishop. So suppose black is trying to escape by playing bishop g8. What do you guys think should happen now? What should white do in this position? Because clearly you cannot push. He's going to take here and then that pawn is hanging. And if you lose this pawn, there's no way you're winning. Not even drawing anymore. It is very important to take advantage, look for the opponent's threat, stop it, and then find a way to win. So king f5 is the correct move in this position, because now here or c7 push the pawn and promote. And there's nothing the black can do about it. Oops. So if he takes here, and that's a really nice move, pawn takes, and then the question is, what is it that we promote? You know how when I play Blitz or Bullet, if you guys are following me with the streams, I have automatic promotion to a queen. But that's probably not the best idea because if you have too many promotion to a queen and you should promote to another piece, then that's the bad situation. Obviously, you cannot promote to a queen or a rook because black will be in stalemate. So we're going to promote to a knight. I'm not sure if black was able to actually see this because, you know, well, it's a study, but I'm not sure if they would see this, but anyways, um, they would see it. <laughs> Under promotion, exactly. Bishop takes e6, king takes e6, king to g8, king to e7, king to h8, and now, ladies and gentlemen, and now we are dealing with a Zugzwang, and the correct move for white in this position is... I wonder if anyone can find it and tell me what it is. Uh, 
I'm not seeing any. I'm not seeing any any uh, any typos. Ninety six. Nope. Nope. Nine f six. Yes. Nine f six. Zugzwang. Right. He's he doesn't have any moves other than taking the knight. And now king to f7, okay? King to f7 or f8 if you want f8, okay, sure. But then the point is you're pushing the pawn, you're promoting, and then you can mate to them. So that's a really cool idea. I love this knight f6 move with the Zugzwang. I hope you guys love it too. All right. And this was the solution for the next position. Now I do have another affect one. I kind of, you know, love Johanan. Affect. I've told you in other streams and other um, life classes that um, he he was he's the first and only compo composer I think that I've ever met, and he was very kind to myself and uh, and Gia Melchan, um because um, we we were playing this tournament in. Uh, in Netherlands, and he was uh, always sharing after the after the games. We were hanging out to have dinner around the playing area, and um, and he was sharing a lot of his really cool studies. Not just his, but some other ones. And so he's he's always going to be special for me, and um, I like to share his his uh, studies whenever possible. But anyways, in this position, it is white to move, and we're trying to find the win. <laughs> affect sounds like an equation no for some reason when i'm copying my positions from chess base they sh make this equal sign here for some reason i'm not even sure why that's happening but it is happening so forget about that equal sign um let's just try to figure out what is happening here we do have an extra rook with white but black is threatening these kind of annoying ideas where he's going to promote his pawns and then we've got nothing. So it is very important to come up with good ideas. Ooh, someone has already seen the solution. And the correct first move is bishop d5 indeed. If you're trying to escape with the rook so that you can somehow find a way to promote your pawn, this crazy move is killing everything. Um, because now if you take it, then obviously they promote. So it makes no sense. And there's no... Uh, good restriction that would actually help us, you know, create a fortress. Not at all. No. So we're gonna go king to d2, for example, right? King to e2, and then he can check. And then if you take, there's b2. And the best thing you can do is sacrifice the bishop, maybe give one more check, and push h7. And whenever black promotes whatever piece, obviously a queen, we're going to sacrifice the, the rook for it, then we're going to promote, and this is going to be a draw. But the point is with white, we're trying to win in this position. So bishop d5, as someone said in the stream, is correct. So we start with this check. He has to capture. He does not have a way out. If he moves the king somewhere, then we will capture this pawn, and after that, he doesn't really have a way. We can just take the pawn and start marching the h pawn. And white is very, very, very easily winning the game, the study. So, so bishop d5 check, king takes. Now the idea is that he's still threatening the same thing, b2 and then promotion. So what to do with white? And here is this gorgeous move that I love very much because there's no other move that can win here the position for white. Um, h7, for example, would not be so good because b2, and then if you move, king c4, and then if you get to promote, black also gets to promote, eventually you do have to take, whether you take it now or later, and then, you know, the probably white does have a, a way to, to, for a position here, but that's about it. That's why in this position it is very important to find this move. Which is very very important. King d2. Nope, it's not king d2. It's actually this gorgeous move. Long castle. What? Long castle? Seriously? Yes. Seriously, long castle because this move comes in with check, and white brings in the king to support to restrict those pawns from promoting, and that's how 
white is going to be able to win if you check them they will take you king c4 we can check them and white is winning because there's no way to stop the h pawn and that is the solution because here here oh by the way we we can put a couple more moves queen king takes and if he plays king c2 he's still one move behind or two moves behind because now white promotes to a queen controls that square you can push and white is winning nice good i'm glad you guys like it i think uh, this was a pretty cool position by johanan effect once again so sacrificing the bishop and then under promotion too but in the same time there's no way to progress moving on to the next position that i have for you guys uh, i'm trying to share more today since it's as i said the last day that i may be maybe maybe on thursday i'll show something but probably not but I think it's kind of cool to um, to see some of these studies and uh, yeah, and try to solve them. Of course, I'm going a little bit fast because I want to, to to share more. But you can always try to save the position and just you know not look at it. Just save the position, come back in a few minutes, and uh, you'll see later the video if you can can uh, come up with the solution but uh, you should spend the time trying to solve them first of course that's that would be good who's move white white so in studies in in studies it is always white to move in problems i believe it's black and then there's also something else where hmm, you can choose whom you are when you create the position you can choose whom you want to start first but it's usually white so in this position it is really really tricky that we've got two pieces and these pawns for the queen but what we're trying to do is trying to find a way to trap the queen and get our pawn promoted if we can black king is does not stay very well it is somewhat restricted so what do we do here with white someone is saying knight g8 but after knight g8 i go king h5 and if you push here to try to trap my queen, I'm going to escape this way and I have plenty of checks to give you and you're not going to make, uh, it's not going to be very easy to escape. Paul Benko was indeed a very strong uh, player, but also a great composer and he has composed some amazing studies. Uh, I believe I did show one or two last class, but today I do not have Paul Benko studies. There are lots of other very strong players that have created studies. Uh, typically, I recommend Kubel or um, who else? Troisky, I guess. Um, do you guys have other names? That because at this time, I guess um, I can't think of um, of more names. Kubel is the one that I uh, probably saw the most studies, but yeah, I don't have the book with me here in Romania, so I didn't choose those kind of studies. Yes. You just said 19. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. The point is that now, unfortunately, you don't have a follow-up for white to try to win because you cannot push this bishop. Um, you cannot you cannot push this pawn because the bishop is hanging, and you can still probably make a draw if you go here and try to promote because you black can give a few checks, but if they stop with the checks, then white promotes. You know. So that's why we don't give the check. We are playing f6 first. And it's really gorgeous what's happening here. Because you're thinking, how can you play f6 first? You're giving up a pawn. He's going to capture it. And he captures it with check. And it's a check knight. And then you have no progress. Why would you sacrifice this pawn? It's just completely silly. Indeed, it is completely silly. But let's not forget, a knight is an amazing piece that restricts checks by the, uh, the opponent's queen. Okay, 
So just because it's a check, it doesn't mean it's game over, right? It's a check night. Okay, we retreated the night. And it's a counter check. Guess what? That doesn't happen so often. But it's a really awesome counter check. Knight f5 check. The king has to go to h5. And now we have this discovery. So how do we do it? Well, we're not rushing yet. h4. Moves like he, uh, h3 do not work. Be very careful as you're giving the checks. Because now there's this crazy move that tries to make... Um, to, black is trying to get the stalemate, and there isn't so much you can do about it. If you go there, he keeps checking. Oopsie, not that. He keeps checking you. And this is a draw. But, since we see that he has that check, and that's the only check he has, we're going to play h4 to restrict it. Now, black's king is completely, fully, 100% restricted. There's not so much he can do. Exactly. So now... He can be fancy and be like, haha, queen g5, check. There we have it. Stalemate it is. I'm going to be able to save myself. Done deal. No, it's not like that. It's not done deal. King e5, we will obviously not take. If we take, it's a stalemate, okay? So we, we, we don't take. We go king e5. And then he can try to sacrifice the queen again because of the way we have placed our pieces and the way he was able to bring the king on the edge of the board. Maybe he's able to you know, save himself, but check or stalemate. But obviously we don't take if we take it stalemate. So we're hiding again, right? Because the knight can control the follow-up checks and is protecting here as well, which is which is pretty awesome. Um, and then king g4 to finally try to escape with the king, maybe take the knight. Obviously we protect the knight. And now black does not really have good moves, and this pawn is just going for the promotion, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can try to bring in the king, the queen there to give one more check, but literally it's just one more check. Then you could go knight e7, for example, or the king can move too, but maybe knight e7. Now there's no check. I guess there's one more check. Okay. Ah, but we, sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. It's 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 this check from from white. That's why you cannot do anything. You need to move the king somewhere, and then we promote, and white is winning. That is it. G7. Gorgeous idea, I think. Black is trying some stalemates, but no. It is white, the one who is winning. Let's try one more position. One more. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. What do you guys think about this position? Well, clearly... With white, we have a piece down. What? Piece down. And when you see something like this, the first thing you should think about is, what? I have a piece down. Let me try to take it. And you could think of this move and you could just play it. And then, well, guess what? You're going to make a draw. And then you'll be like, oh, man, why didn't they try harder? Why didn't they try harder? Because here, um, maybe queen f7 and black will have that perpetual check idea. That will be kind of annoying. So with white, you have to be very careful what you take and when you take it to make sure he will not be able to save himself. Let's not forget in this position, black king does stay on some kind of mate, right? So if somehow the queen gets to d1 or e2 or even f3, it's going to be a checkmate. And um, that can be checkmates in in uh, in studies as well. It doesn't have to be in a middle game. It doesn't have to be in end games. Yeah, when, when you get to play Blitz games and then you get into an endgame, I know it's really tough, but C4, everyone's saying C4, that's an interesting choice. I know you want to play Queen E2, but if you do that, I'm just going to play Queen E6 or Queen E8, maybe Queen E8 to keep the knight protected, or maybe Queen E6, I'm not sure which one, maybe E6. Because um, if you take, then I'm going to give you check, you go somewhere, and then king h3, and you're actually running out of checks, and I'm threatening a bunch of mates, and you cannot stop these. You cannot really stop it. Explosion. Uh, c4 is explosive. It's explosive, but it's explosive for white. So white is trying to maybe not lose here, but maybe even win. And c4, unfortunately, gives black the opportunity to get the activity of the queen. Right now, he didn't really have the activity. 
So, since we do not want the Ubuntu to have the activity, something you have to remember from end games in general, um, studies as well, but what you have to remember is it's very important when you have queens on the board to try to centralize your queen. From the center, the middle of the board, the queen controls so much and it's just it's it's very hard to, to do much. So queen e5, this is a very strong and beautiful move. Still keeping the pressure on the knight, but in the same time we want this mate, which was basically the whole reason why we are, you know, here. Uh, <laughs> we want this mate. So he has to go there so that he stops the mate. If you check him, he's going to go queen here, right? Exactly, exactly. So we're going to check him anyways. It doesn't matter. He's going to go queen g4. And then we'll check him again, and he's going to go queen g6, and he will say, okay, I'll offer you a draw, that's fine. It's not too bad. You cannot really take my knight. You probably want to, but I'll always have this activity with my queen, and most likely it's going to be a draw. So that's the reason after queen g6, white needs to come up with a good idea. And what's that good idea? Anyone? Nobody has said this move. Surprising. This is my favorite move. If you've watched me even one time, <laughs> I pretty much say it all the time in my streams, in videos, everywhere. My favorite move is G4. Pawn to G4. That's usually my favorite move. Everyone is like G4 now. Everyone is like G4. Yes, that is my favorite move. The reason behind it, you can find it out. In some YouTube videos, I've said it many times. I'm not going to share it now so that you can go and research more videos. Uh, but anyways, um, g4 is the idea. And now, uh, you cannot take with the king, obviously, because you lose your queen. Um, and you cannot take with the queen. You can move the king if you want to. Um, you cannot take, of course, because the queen is hanging. And if you go there, also the queen is hanging. So the only move possible move is pawn takes. Exactly. If I can sign the g4 square, that's the square I'll sign. But usually I'm asked to, to, to sign a specific other square, so it's not going to happen that, but anyways. So he takes, right? So we take advantage of the fact that the knight is out of play, not so important, and we try to take advantage to see if we can find a way to win. He has to go king h4, and now we continue checking him. And it's really beautiful, I think, all these checks. King goes back, and now you want to try to mate the king. It's always been the whole idea to try to mate the opponent's king. So king g3, threatening a checkmate once again, once again. And black does not have any checks. That was also very, very important. So white, how white put the queen on e7, that's just amazing. Now, black needs to move in the queen, move out the queen, actually, so that the king can go back home and avoid the mate. But guess what? No, we don't let you. We do not let you avoid that. Uh, and then after queen d5, mate. But there's nothing you can do, because there's mate anyways here in h4. That was that, guys. After pawn to g4, why not f5? After queen takes g4, when? I'm not quite sure where did I do that. After g4? After g4, queen takes g4 is not possible. Because it's pinned, so king takes or pawn takes. But king takes, I said that already, you're taking the queen. And pawn takes, you're saying f5 after pawn takes? No, f5 if you play, he will take your queen. And that's why it was very important to give these checks, okay? The king went, and it is just super crazy that he cannot just go there. And then the mate is happening. So, guys, that was, uh, that was that. I hope you guys I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys enjoy the studies that I've come up with. I didn't come up with. I chose for today's class with the different themes to kind of review some promotions, some cellmates, some Zugzwang, some maids, 
because you usually don't see so many mates in studies. It's usually like a win or it's a you know draw through cellmate or or repetition. But look, you're also getting to see a mate on the board, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, what else? Um, I really hope, really, really hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't done so yet, please do follow, sorry, subscribe to San Luis Chess Club's YouTube channel. You don't need to do anything. It's all free. Just click the subscribe button and you will be notified whenever we go live. Um, also, if you like this video, thanks for giving us a thumbs up. We will know what to continue creating for the club's YouTube channel. I hope I'm going to see um, many of you soon, both on YouTube and on Twitch. Have a wonderful rest of the evening and see you in my next videos. Bye for now.